So it could be the smallest technique that can make the world a difference in your playing. And we're going to be talking about that today, the double thumb technique. All right, guys, really quick, I want to talk about this. Don't want to make it too long. The double thumb technique, a lot of people try to master this or try to learn it, and it seems a little bit difficult. But once you get the concept down, you'll be able to master it in no time. So really what I like to use it for is as a ghost note. The upstroke is as a ghost note to my playing. So as you saw in the beginning, I was doubling each note when I played the walking bass line, but the upstroke is more of a ghost note for me. It's usually not played or heard, ghost note meaning just it's, it's like a place of a note. It's not really heard. You hear the beat of it, but you won't hear the note that comes out. So it's really as a placement holder for the bass line. So if the original bass line is a walking bass line in G, if I were to double that but not play the ghost note, it'll sound something like that, but I'm just using the double thumb technique for this instance. So when I'm playing the bass line, the whole technique in itself is down, slapping down, and then going up. Hopefully you can see that. I wanna bring it a little bit closer so you can see. So down through the string, up with the tip of your nail or with your nail bed. So that formation or that movement can be really, really, really tricky. You just have to slow it down and practice it at your own space or at your own pace. You don't have to play any notes. You can just hold the notes down and you can hold the frets down. Down, up, down, up. You don't have to use any notes. You can muffle the strings or hold the strings down with your fretting hand and just go down. I'm using the A string for right now. The A string, through the A string to the D string and up the A string with the same exact thumb. So that formation, once you get that, your hand is really stiff when you're doing it. So you're moving more of your wrist, not even your wrist, really your forearm, than you are your thumb. So you're really not moving your thumb at all. You want your thumb to be as stiff as possible so you can make that, you know, kind of machine gun type of thumb. So you want it to be as stiff as possible. So thumb stiff, forearm in rotation this way, down through the string and up the string. So I want to practice that very, very slowly with each string. Down, up. And usually when I'm playing it behind the neck in this space between the pickup and the neck, I'm usually able to catch the string a little bit better right there. I can get my thumb underneath the string and then come up. So really any pace that's comfortable for you, you really don't have to do this with the metronome per se, but I would just say, take your time, go through each string. D, G. And then when you're ready, you can start adding some notes. So a simple walking bass line in the key of G, say for instance, is a perfect example of that. Start them off as whole notes, just ringing, let the notes ring out. So B, C, C sharp, D, D, F, F sharp, G. So each note is doubled. So down, up, down, up for each note. So very simple, let the notes ring. Then once you're done with that, choke that note. So what I'm doing here on my fretting hand is I'm just lifting up off of the string so I can get that choking sound. So I'm just muffling the string really quick. Right? So I'm muffling the string really quick so I can get that choking sound or that, that choking effect. And then once you're used to that, do the rest of the bass line. You can go down the string, do, it really doesn't have to be in the key of G, you can go down, uh, just descending down the, the frets or the notes or the strings. I started wrong, started the opposite way. That's really weird when you start up versus down. Anyway. <laughs> Make sure you can get a nice 
a consistent note out of the upstroke. So that's the toughest part of this exercise. I would believe, or the most difficult, is getting the upstroke to sound pretty full. And it's not gonna sound exactly mm -hmm. like the downstroke. I'm gonna warn you now. So if you go to play a downstroke note and the upstroke sounds a little weird, it sounds a little tinny or thin, it's going to by default because you're playing it with a different part of your finger versus the flesh part of your thumb and the nail bed of your thumb. Okay, so just take that into consideration. It's going to sound different at first, but just take your time, take it slow, make sure you can get a nice solid note out of it. And once you get comfortable with that, you can start experimenting with ghost notes as well. This is very popular with a lot of gospel guys. I, I know when I'm playing that the type of shout music that they call it or praise break music and a walking bass line like this, I usually play this style with the double thumb technique or even with my uh, index finger and my thumb. And you know, I just kind of developed that because I was a little lazy at the time. I was playing a lot and my fingers were tired. So I ended up. I ended up playing with index and thumb versus, see you know what I'm saying? You get the same type of effect, the doubling effect, but just in a different method. So there's different ways to do it. And you, like I said, you hear a lot of gospel guys play, a lot of gospel bass players play this double thumb style. You hear it a lot in funk too. If I just slow this groove down that I played in the beginning. And I view that as keeping time, keeping rhythm. So you'll hear those extra notes as if you're playing a drum beat or as if you're hearing some drums, like a hi-hat, you know, bass drum or kick drum, snare. So in a nutshell, that's basically the concept for the double thumb technique. And once you learn this and master it, you'll start using it in everything. Trust me, I swear to you, it's that much fun to play and it's that easy to execute. You'll actually, you know, expend a little bit less energy playing with a double thumb versus just slapping and bouncing like that. So, you know, you can use it to your advantage where you would like to. And also, if you wanna know more or learn more about these ghost notes or these double thumb techniques that I'm using, we have a bunch of courses and tutorials on this specific topic and much, much more at Bass Nation Academy. I'll put the link in the description where you can enhance your bass playing. It's just an online community, online school to where you can enhance your bass playing to that next level. There's tons of members already there, thousands of members really already there enhancing their bass playing. So if you wanna take a look at that, I'll leave the link in the description. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, hit the red subscribe button, make sure you get notified, click the bell so you can get notified of every single lesson or tutorial or video or vlog or whatever we post on our channel and uh make sure your notes are coming out clean clear and precise check you guys in the next one peace